This last section of notes is on genetic engineering. And there's an article that I left, left the class set of about these little marmosets. Marmosets are primates. And um, keep in mind, there aren't a lot of humans who are willing to be experimented on or genetically engineered. Now, genetically engineering, I need you to add in the word purposeful. So we're back in our notes. And again, anytime you need to pause, just nicely ask. Genetic engineering, just like engineering is building something on purpose, genetic engineering is the purposeful modifying or creating of recombinant DNA. Recombinant DNA is artificial DNA that is created by combining two different sources of DNA. So if we go back to the example of my husband and his liver disease called Gilbert, what if we wanted to cure him? Well, could I donate a functioning copy of that gene? And they put my gene in my husband's DNA, and we just get rid of his gene, right? We fix what was broken. Well, it's not quite that easy, but that is what they're trying to do with genetic engineering. They're trying to fix DNA or add new DNA. Now, this example with the marmosets, what they actually did is put in the gene, you know, um, fireflies and how they glow. They put the glow gene into the marmosets when they were little tiny babies. And when the marmosets grew up, that gene, when you turned the lights off, their paws would glow. Now, why did we do that? We're not creating a super animal. We're not going to give um, anybody wings or gills. The point of this gene is to tell if it worked. So right now, we're just still trying to get this process, genetic engineering, to work. And sometimes it's not easy to see something on the inside of the body like the liver, but it is easy to see something on the outside of the body. So there's a short article if you want to read this and actually read about all the progress that they're making with genetic engineering. There are a couple of terms that we need to know, and so you'll notice them here. You do need to know transgenic organisms. And it means you have foreign DNA, DNA that is not normally there. And recombinant DNA, which means DNA that has been combined from two different sources. So the most famous example is actually how we make human insulin. Think back to diabetes and how people who have diabetes can't make insulin. How do they get insulin in their insulin pump? Turns out, we actually get bacteria to make a human gene. So if we want to make a transgenic organism, um, a restriction enzyme, again, that restriction enzyme shows up. Now remember, restriction enzymes are specific. They have, they cut at a very specific place, just like any enzyme is specific. So the restriction enzyme is going to cut or cleave the desired gene. That's really important, and that's where the DNA fingerprinting comes in, is we have to find the right gene. So we cut the desired gene out. Now, the most successful genetic engineering we've ever done is getting bacteria, bacteria to actually make human proteins. Now, uh, bacteria don't need insulin. Insulin controls the sugar in your blood. Bacteria don't have blood. But... They do have DNA, they do have tRNA, they can make mRNA, they can build proteins. So if I give the bacteria the gene from a human, bacteria doesn't know it's a human gene, it's just a gene, it gets told to make that protein. So all we have to do is find the desired gene and put it into the bacteria. Now the main reason we use bacteria is they're small, they're easy to grow. The company that makes insulin has giant vats or containers filled with bacteria. These bacteria aren't harmful. They're actually doing good. They've been engineered to make human proteins. Um, one thing we do have to pay attention to, here's a new vocab word, vector. Vector means to carry. So how do I get a gene from a human cell into a bacteria cell? We don't have little tools to do this. We're literally mixing things and hoping that it works. So it's not the best way to do this quite yet. So there's still a lot of research here. But we do identify that we need to find the gene 
and then we need to get the gene in to our host. So if you'll circle bacteria and write common host. Bacteria are easy to grow, easy to manipulate, so we're going to use them anytime we can. Now a plasmid is the most common vector. We're using bacteria. We're going to use something that's already in bacteria, which is something called a plasmid. It's a little circular piece of DNA. So, if I want to create a transgenic organism, maybe it's a gene therapy human. Maybe it's a plant that is drought resistant. Maybe it's a, uh, another organism that is resistant to HIV. We could, in theory, do any sort of genetic engineering, but the steps will always be the same. Find the gene and cut it out, put it into a vector, and then put that vector into the host. So I need to splice the foreign DNA and the vector together. Now it's important, how do I get them to stick together? If I cut them with the same restriction enzyme, then this process will actually work. So in your, um, in your notes, where it says plasmid open with restriction enzyme, if you'll really put a box around that, it has to be the same restriction enzyme that we cut the gene out with. So we cut the gene out, but now we need to splice it into this plasmid. So find the gene, cut it out, splice it together, and then put it back into the host cell. Now every time this host cell reproduces, it's going to make more. We do have some serious concerns about whether this is the right thing to do. Um, for now, the main thing that you're going to practice is the process. But as you're doing that, we do want to think about, should we do this? Should we go around doing genetic engineering? If it were your family that had a disease, maybe you would feel a little bit differently. Um, and so this is the end of the notes. And um, just pause it here for as long as you need.